So, I initially thought I would end this week with a video that goes into a performance and sales analysis of the 7600 XT and of course a sales analysis of the 4070 Ti Super as well, but that assumed I had anything hot to say about these launches. And well, yeah, I was happy to comment quickly on the RTX 4070 Ti Super performance because it was surprising to a lot of people. I had something to say. And I was also happy and able to quickly comment on RTX 4070 Super sales quickly because, good lord, they were so bad that I could draw a conclusion about them immediately. But the fact of the matter is that I have far more important things to leak to you all tonight, considering I don't have anything further that's that hot to say about the 7600 XT and 4070 Ti Super. Well, except I guess let me say this. I really do think that we need more time to assess 7600 XT and 4070 Ti Super sales because they both seem to be selling some but they are not selling well enough or, or bad enough for me to really make a big conclusion about their levels of success. Yet, although I will say this for now, I saw some people talking about the 4070 Ti Super sales like they were good, but if you actually pay attention to this one data point people all seem to be quoting on screen right now, and it is just one data point once you zoom out to a global scale, people, it shows the 4070 Ti Super selling worse than the 4070 that I think a lot of people are already forgetting was a sales disaster, according to all reporting at the time. So at a minimum, I don't think NVIDIA is happy about 4070 Ti Super sales, although again... I don't think it's ready to say how bad or good it is. And the same goes for the 7600 XT, that if you look at this one data point, you could argue is selling three times as well as the 4060 compared to the 4060 launch. But again, it's too soon. I'm not going to conclude that overall, over time, the 7600 XT will sell three times better than the 4060 because, well, you really shouldn't assess low-end graphics card sales when they launch late in a generation in the middle of a work week because that's just not a type of card people usually drive out and get after work in the middle of the week. All right then, so moving on to the main story of the night, it has to do with some alarmingly bad details I have just been sent about Intel's Battlemage generation that I have proof of in writing that I insisted on being allowed to show you so that you'll actually believe me. Now, before I get to that and actually other details about ARC that aren't all bad news, well, I want to say something first. If you came here to see somebody dunk on Intel and hate, you came to the wrong video. This video is going to mostly strike a somber tone like that ARC effectively canceled video I put out a couple years ago, although I'll try to end on an uplifting note. But actually, yeah, if you don't believe me that I had a somber tone two years ago when I talked about ARC being effectively canceled, and you might not because there are some truly deranged people online misquoting this channel constantly, go watch that video. It is one of my shorter ones, and in it you can see that I am clearly sad to report that the GPUs I had exclusively leaked and been excited about for years were being effectively canceled. And there was a lot of nuance in there that you would have missed if you didn't watch the video by what I meant by effectively. And I'm tired of the people that aren't paying attention to the nuance. There's a ton of people that seem to downplay any good developments out of Intel Arc because they misunderstand how pessimistic I was. And there's another group of people that definitely overhype any Arc news out there in some weird misguided attempt to prove this channel wrong but i'm absolutely sick of it and i feel like it's time for this channel to hit the reset button when it comes to talking about arc because i'm tired of it being poisoned by all the fanboys arguing below so when it comes to intel arc being canceled let's just be very clear about the things that were said in that video two years ago and what has happened since then since then there has been no alchemist plus generation it was fake and my contacts at intel directly tell me that roadmap was made up and then there was also no ultra enthusiast launch of battle mage in 2023 despite raja kadori sharing a roadmap that had basically nothing on it actually happen before of course intel's graphics division itself was dissolved and raja kadori was fired brutally actually if you want to know the truth because i have a video that talks about how bad it was behind the scenes so let's recap no alchemist plus last year that was made up no 
Ultra Enthusiast Battle Mage last year, and still not this year. I'll get to that in a second. And also, the Intel Graphics Division was literally dissolved at one point, and Raja was fired. Guys, if you watch what I said two years ago in the Intel Effectively Cancelled video, I was right already. It's already all the things that I said were going to happen have happened, and it's time to stop dwelling on those points so that, well, we can look at new art developments with fresh eyes and without the baggage. And that is what I am going to do today when I tell you about, yeah, more art cancellations that might be happening, but also what I'm starting to see might be leading to a sort of hibernation that might actually see art survive for another go at it years from now, and I want to talk about that, but first an ad from a sponsor. This past New Year's Eve, we brought my dog Jesse with us to party in Chicago, and she loved it. To our surprise, the big city didn't scare her, it excited her with all of its possibilities. And for me, that's how I feel about outer space. Like endless opportunities and adventure await around every star, and you can experience that feeling yourself by playing Star Trek Fleet Command. This piece of content is brought to you by Star Trek Fleet Command, a cross-play game that is available on desktop and mobile with a Scopely account. In Star Trek Fleet Command, you can customize your ship, fleet, and crew to dominate the Star Trek universe filled with all of the characters and lore you love. That includes characters from the Next Generation, the original series, the J.J. Abrams films, Discovery, and more, including Kirk Spock, Michael Burnham, Data, and Geordi, as you boldly go where no one has gone before. And remember that this game is free to play, and every month they are still adding new content to the game. Recent additions include the first stage of the Enterprise arc that allows players to explore the aftermath of the temporal Cold War plotline from Season 3 of Star Trek Enterprise, and that includes new core missions and side missions that you can also be playing with your new Enterprise officers, Trip Tucker and T'Pol, before you take a break with the new Wave Defense. Wave Defense introduces a new way for players to socially interact based on Wave Defense teams that transcend alliances. Download Star Trek Fleet Command using the link in my description, and then use the code WARPSPEED to get 10 epic shards of Kirk for free and kick off your adventure. Doing this helps you kick off your galactic adventure with a bang, and it also helps the channel a ton. And that's one more time, support Moore's Law is Dead by clicking on that link in the description and using the code WARPSPEED to start your Star Trek Fleet Command adventure properly today. All right, now before I get to the good news, I think it is best if I get the bad news out of the way first. Believe it or not, the original script for this video that I actually half finished weeks ago and then put on ice while I talked about NVIDIA Super endlessly, it feels like, well, I plan to use this uplifting thumbnail that you're seeing on screen right now to try to convey a positive turning of the page for the ARC brand. In fact, the original title for this video was something like, Intel Battle Mage, the next chapter of ARC. But like any good analysis, my main thesis that I start with when I begin writing a script, well, it's a thesis based on what I've been hearing before that needs to be tested to see if it's partially wrong or entirely wrong. And so, well, I had an initial thesis about what Battle Mage might be, which to be honest, I was hoping it would be some laptop focused graphics card that lied low for a while the wide low for a while might be true, but apparently the graphics part of it in laptop, that's the part that is not true. Once I started digging really hard with my sources on exactly what is going on with Battle Mage, double checking everything, dotting I's, well, honestly, people, it seems like discrete Battle Mage for laptop, it may be canceled already. Now, I want to be clear that it is going to be a maybe because it's hard for me to be 100% sure about anything going on at Intel anymore with how many firings and cancellations they have there. But this will be a drastic reversal if it happens. And when I put this on screen now, you can see I have it in writing. What you are looking at here is a master document. The, there are these things on databases at AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA that outline the current plans for Battle Mage for people who need to know. And this was recently updated in December, apparently. At least now is when I'm finding out about this. And without telling you where it came from, I can just tell you that it goes to the very top. And clearly in this master document, it says that while desktop and workstation cards are still planned to be made, there will be no mobile video cards 
on the Battle Mage product roadmap. And it says that clearly, and it also actually confirms PCIe Gen 5 times 16, but you know, whatever about that. And you know, I didn't stop there, of course. I also reached out to my contacts and asked them to ask around and look at as many things as they could. And if I put this quote on screen here, this comes from one of my best Intel sources that says, once I told them about this, they started digging. And when they looked into it, they saw that the Battle Mage documents they had access to, which they swear not too long ago were referencing mobile, actually mobile launches first, they now have the mobility versions of Battle Mage erased from most of them. And they all still list Battle Mage dedicated cards as of now, targeting an end of 2024 or early 2025. Just to be clear, not coming out anytime soon, if it does come out, by the way. But that the laptop references are basically all gone. And based on this, this person is questioning if the desktop lineup will remain intact as well. Because, well, what would be the point of Battle Mage without having a laptop version of it to be paired with their ultra cpus and here's a weird thing by the way that i've also seen in some documentation now the first thing a lot of you would probably say if battle mages mobile versions of the discrete cards are canceled is it's probably because their efficiency is terrible and to be clear i cannot rule that out and i would not bet as you're about to see by the way that Battle Mage's efficiency will be even remotely close to RDNA 4 or Blackwell. Th that's not what I'm going to say. But what I will say is that while I cannot rule out that maybe, you know, once you scale Battle Mage from a tiny Lunar Lake sized tile to something big that uses over 200 watts, that its efficiency goes to complete crap. That might be true. But at least what I've seen so far, and I did dig with some sources today at Intel pretty hard, of Lunar Lake's integrated graphics efficiency, it at least seems like Lunar Lake's graphics are quite a bit more efficient than Meteor Lake, possibly beating 45 watt Meteor Lake integrated graphics with a 15 watt Lunar Lake integrated graphics chip. That sounds really good to me. But at the end of the day, the best explanation I can give for why Intel would be canceling their laptop variants of dedicated Battle Mage cards actually has to do with the quotes I'm going to put on screen right now from OEMs. So the first source here, one of my best sources at a very large laptop OEM, says that they haven't seen literally anything about Battle Mage yet. Now, a second source at a major laptop OEM told me that they have seriously not had a single brief or email about Battle Mage yet from their contacts at Intel, and that they cannot speak for their competitors, but what they can say is that it is already too late for them to implement Battle Mage into any notebook launch in 2024 if they were to be fully briefed and given the specs on Battle Mage today and to be clear this person already has some details about rdna4 and blackwell you have to wait for that by the way people sorry uh but then source number three here who works at a major oem who's also an aib told me that they don't know one single thing about battle mage and frankly they don't ever want to this person told me that Intel can quote them whatever they want about Battle Mage, but after the debacle that was Alchemist and the other debacle that was Meteor Lake, they don't believe anything Intel tells them about performance or efficiency anymore. And so they're going to need to watch and see Intel successfully launch Battle Mage by themselves and have it live up to the hype before they'll consider supporting any future ARC graphics generation in a laptop again. And honest to God, the impression that I get is that number one, OEMs are showing absolutely no interest in Battle Mage. And then number two, Intel is noticing that. And they know deep down that by the time Discrete Battle Mage is ready, if it is ever ready, and plenty of people at Intel tell me they cannot promise it will ever come out because they're still having so many issues finishing this thing, that it's for sure going to miss the window for a comfortable launch to OEMs for laptops in quarter one of 2025, which is the latest they would want this thing to come out to have any reasonable chance of success in laptop because, well, number three, no OEM that I speak with, and I mean I spoke with... A a half a dozen of them let's say roughly half a dozen oems not a single one says they're going to choose arc graphics cards for any of the laptops they're planning over blackwell or even rdna4 because they know that remember in 2025 
Battle Mage isn't competing with Lovelace, which they don't expect it to be as efficient as. It'll be competing with Blackwell, and there's there's no way they can justify risking putting a vastly inferior Battle Mage into a laptop, because if that laptop does not sell because of an arc sticker with an inferior Battle Mage graphics card, they didn't just waste money on selling a graphics card, or should I say, trying to sell a graphics card. They have a laptop sitting there that has wasted money on an OLED screen that nobody bought, on a battery nobody bought, on a chassis that nobody bought, on a CPU that nobody bought, and on RAM that nobody bought. They're throwing away all the components they put into making a laptop if someone doesn't buy it. And so that's why they're trying to only make safe bets. And it sounds like that's mostly going to be Blackwell graphics cards and AMD APU systems, like that hyped up Strix Halo thing. They're excited about that. They are not excited about Battle Mage. And so if, and it definitely is still an if, so many things keep changing at Intel Arc. So if... If that document doesn't get updated again, if there is no mobility versions of Discrete Battle Mage, then I do believe it is because OEMs just don't want it, and Intel knows it will not be competitive there. But if Intel does launch a dedicated desktop card in super low volume, which it sounds like they're probably going to do, what will it look like? Well, remember, what I'm about to put on screen here... Everything having to do with Intel is subject to change. All I can tell you is that as of right now, these are the designs that could go forward as a discrete Battle Mage lineup. But it really, it really would not surprise me if they were cut down for the top version or the top die was canceled. Plenty of people tell me they still think the top die won't come out. But what would that top die be? Well, let me put this on screen here. So yeah, Intel Battle Mage update late January 2024. So the top die, G31, uses a TSMC 5 nanometer family node. It is 347 millimeter squared. So again, using a smaller die for the time than what they used with Alchemist, meaning it is more low end. And anyone who says that's a high end die, remember this would be a product that's effectively launching in 2025. That is not high end by 2025 when Blackwell is going to be 3 nanometer. Anyways, though, 512 execution units, same as Alchemist, 16 gigabytes again. And then there will be a cut down variant as of now that is planned that is 448 execution units with 16 gigabytes. I've also seen a 384 execution unit variant in some documentation, but I'm not sure if it's just for testing or if it will be released publicly. But at least there's two 16 gigabyte cards planned right now. And then there's a smaller die, G21, 271 millimeter squared, 192 bit bus. Again, remember, a 271 millimeter squared die from a gen that when this launches will be at least a generation old for the node that is not high end. And yeah, 320 execution units, uh, 12 gigabytes at the top with that 192 bit bus, and then cut down to 160 bit, 10 gigabyte, 256, and then 256, 8 gigabytes for the ultra low and probably like b380 or something card will be that one there at the bottom and yeah as exclusively leaked by this channel last year battle mage is listed as supporting gddr6 and gddr6x i did double check this by the way still no documentation lists gddr7 even though i hear that nvidia is likely to support that for blackwell but going back to the leak here um, unlike with Alchemist, though, curiously, top performance targets are not something listed frequently on documents. And I want to be clear what I mean by that. I, I cannot tell you how many documents said, like, 3070 competitor, 3070 Ti competitor for the A780. They, they, they constantly listed their performance targets, like A750, uh, 3060 competitor or something, eventually, is what they said. Uh, and the documentation I've seen for Battle Mage, they don't tend to list performance targets. Now... I think a lot of that is because the ARC team is shell-shocked and they're scared to make any performance claims anymore. It's either that, though, or more pessimistically, it would mean that they actually still have no clue how well Battle Mages perform will perform because it's not anywhere near being done. But just telling you that you don't see the performance targets for these cards that you used to see with the previous generation. And so I know this sounds silly here, but the best I can confirm based on unideal Lunar Lake tests, which I tried to like reverse engineer per execution unit and add it up in a best or worst case scenario, based on what I have seen, which again, it's not really 
meant for this type of a comparison but what i've seen in the limited amount of testing and projections for lunar lake integrated graphics performance on documents i can say that i would suggest battle mage if the top die launches which it might not it would place it between a 30 70 and a 40 70 super and again remember i mean intel was trying to hit 30 70 ti performance and this is an imperfect comparison so do not double down on performance right now but just keep in mind that's like a best case scenario is a round of 40 70 super maybe 40 70 ti in performance and i think that's important to remember as a best case scenario because well okay that is roughly double the performance of the A770. All right, but think about it. If RDNA 4, based on at least what I have heard, is going to be around 4080 performance for $400 to $600, let's split the difference, let's say $500, AMD has a graphics card at the end of this year that's as strong as a 4080, well, then 4070 Ti, that's like 25% weaker than that. The cutdown version of top rdna 4 is probably going to be about the performance of a 4070 ti itself for like 400 dollars or less and these dies are not small so i don't know how intel would make a profit selling something weaker or the same performance as cut down rdna 4 that costs more to make they probably have to sell it for 350 at a loss again so that's not an optimistic scenario for them actually going forward and launching this by the way but going back to the leak though here's where things get really interesting celestial right now is listed for a launch in mid 2026 and druid for a launch in late 2027 assuming they're not canceled which of course they could be and both of them only have two low-end dies left that aren't officially canceled they had three or four dies before but then those have been axed in the documentation all that's left is low-end stuff launching years from now but also new documents have arrived in the databases of intel that say that both celestial and druid have a single tile config listed as an alternative flagship for the top variants of their architecture. Yes, that directly suggests that now Intel is considering saying that top celestial is not a discrete GPU, even though their own website will call it that, of course, but might actually just be a tile that they put into some APU like Panther Lake or Nova Lake. And so that tells you right there that there is real evidence here that not only is Battle Mage canceled for laptop, not only does it seem questionable that it will come out to desktop, but I'm already seeing evidence that Top Celestial may now literally just be a tile they put in one of their APUs. So yeah, things are going about as well at AXG as I told you they would go a couple of years ago. But I did tell you I was going to try to end this video on a positive note. And so, well, here we go. Ultimately, I was depressed two years ago when I leaked that Intel Arc effectively canceled video because, well, it seriously sounded like there was a chance that Arc wasn't just headed downhill, but that it might make Intel go out of business if they throw more good money after bad, funding something that isn't going to make them any money for years. Either that, or it seemed like they were just going to abruptly cancel it sooner rather than later, and we were going to lose our third entrant into the GPU market that at least I've wanted for a very long time. But as much as I do want a third entrant into the GPU market, and I was excited about that for years when it seemed like it might happen well... I'm not going to lie to you for clicks. And so I was forced to tell you it wasn't going well years ago. And today, today I'm actually happy to see that even if they aren't seemingly going to compete with NVIDIA and dedicated laptops directly this year, which I really think we could use considering OEM seem allergic to putting Radeon in laptops right now. What I am looking at here is my hibernation theory that I outlined years ago where I suggested that what Intel needed to do clearly from what I was seeing behind the scenes is massively reduce the scope of Intel Arc generation so that they can keep working on their drivers for years, gain back some goodwill, and then once they have money again, which people, they do not have right now money to gamble with if you look at the news, once they do have money again, 
hopefully they didn't burn all of it too soon and have to cancel arc hopefully they hibernated arc long enough to be able to reboot it quickly once they have the money and so i think intel is just cutting arc segments left and right right now so they can survive and that's a good thing because well Fucking admit it, haters. Half of you got mad at my leak two years ago because it meant that Intel wasn't going to make your RTX 4080 cheaper. Admit it. Half of you haters just want Intel to keep running the company into the ground, funding stuff that can't make money because you want your 4080 cheaper. That's not what I want. What I want, this person here wearing an Intel shirt that I own, this person here who actually is very proud to have this 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 graphics card that basically no one actually has in their offices right now. I'm someone that actually wants Intel to succeed long term. To be able to compete with NVIDIA and AMD long term. And not to just make one generation cheaper temporarily while they run the company into the ground. And if they hibernate, only release one or two little discrete things that don't matter that much but at least don't lose them a lot of money so they can keep working on drivers for years well then this disaster that raja lied to you about may be effectively canceled but with death could come new beginnings and i am one hoping that intel arc lives to see another day and a real day and uh i'm also hoping you all live to see my next video that's the best transition i could come up with quickly for this one but no seriously i hope you did enjoy this video if you did please remember to hit the like button and double check that you are subscribed to the moore's law z youtube channel as i love a lot more intel leaks coming actually this was just going to be one part of like a 40 minute long intel over the next few years lake but i decided to break it up into different parts yeah i will be talking about other intel products coming out later this year and over the next few years i've got new information for you i've also got new exciting information about mm, everything the playstation 5 pro switch 2 about upcoming zen architectures i've got both good and bad news when it comes to that rdna 4 leaks blackwell leaks it's I hope there's enough hours in the week to get these videos out over the next couple of months. So make sure you're subscribed to the Moore's Laws that YouTube channel so you don't miss all that upcoming content. And again, ring the bell button so you actually see the notifications. And then also consider supporting Moore's Laws that on Patreon. You'll get ad-free exclusive content every week. Just today, actually in the past 24 hours, a new die shrink came out looking at concerns me and Dan have with hardware reviewers and just the industry itself right now reviewing pc hardware going on that's just an ad free hour long video for supporters of the channel two dollars gets you access to that and hundreds of other exclusive pieces of ad free content we cannot do this without our patrons but for everybody else if you made it this far thank you for watching <laughs>